Hi, my name is Phil. I'm a corporate systems engineer here at AGI, and today I'm going to be showing you how to use multi-track objects, or MTOs, in SDK. So multi-track objects are pretty interesting in SDK because they're something that uh, allows you to represent objects, tracks, or trajectories, but only visually. So why would you want to use MTO objects in your analysis? Well, MTO objects represent uh, many objects, many tracks, up to thousands potentially, just visually. And this allows you to visualize these objects without bogging down your system. But they're still a useful feature, especially in doing accurate visual representation and graphical analysis of your objects. So to get started, I've got SDK opened up here. And we're going to go ahead and insert just a blank MTO object. So insert objects, scenario objects. And if you don't see MTO popping up here in this window, you can go ahead and hit Edit Preferences and make sure that MTO over here on the left-hand uh, box is checked. Then click Apply or OK. Then we're going to go ahead and insert just the default multi-track object. And now if I close off the insert object menu and bring up the properties of the MTO, you'll notice that there's nothing populated here. Now you have to actually manually add in the tracks or trajectories of the vehicles. And another great advantage of MTOs is that you can use them to model tracks or routes of any kind of vehicle. It doesn't have to be a satellite, it could be an aircraft, a boat, a ground vehicle, anything that moves through space can be represented with an MTO. Again, only visually. But today we're going to be populating this MTO with satellites, a large number of satellites. And this has applications to a wide array of things. Uh, you can import the entire catalog of satellites or spacecraft into an MTO and visualize that. Uh, but today we're going to be focusing on just inserting a satellite or a constellation of satellites at a specific altitude. And the way you can go about that is by inserting a default satellite. You open it up here and you can change around the properties to get to the orbital shell or the uh, properties of whatever orbit you want to create a constellation of MTO objects at. I'm just going to keep the default properties. I'm going to click Apply and OK. And you'll see here that we've got our default satellite loaded into the scenario. And so uh, playing around with the properties of this, you can get to the different kinds of orbital shells you want. You can combine MTOs of different uh, types to have representation of multiple orbital shells, but I'm just going to be doing a uh, constellation at this shell. And so the way that you can do that, and this takes uh, advantage, it makes advantage of scripting and other components of uh, SDK, is we're going to generate a two-line element for the satellite. So we're going to click Generate Two-Line Element by right-clicking on the satellite in the object browser. Going to just click create leave all the defaults and you'll notice here that SDK has created a TLE based or two-line element based satellite here using the SGP4 propagator which is what two-line elements uh, two-line element satellites are uh, especially useful with and so what we're going to do with this satellite this newly created satellite is we're going to right click it and open up the report and graph manager and so we're going to go ahead and choose the TLE report here on the reports list so just TLE, double click that. And you'll see here that it's given us the two line element file for the satellite. Uh, the only parameters that really matter to us are these lines here, one and two. So a two line element file conveniently only has two lines. And each one of these columns uh, corresponds to specific parameters like the true anomaly, the inclination, um, RAM, spacecraft ID, and other kinds of properties. And if you want to create a constellation of these, you can use some sort of scripting or programming language to step out uh, inclination, ran, and spacecraft ID to actually create or walk through a constellation of two-line elements at the same shell as the satellite that you generated the two-line element for. So I use that with Python. I'm going to go ahead and show you my script that I came up with really quick. And so all this is doing is I'm giving a function, a Python function, the number of planes that I want at that shell, so the same altitude, inclination, and the number of satellites I want per plane. So that I'll step through and distribute them evenly among each plane, or however many planes I tell it to do. So I'm going to go ahead and load in one that I did earlier. So when you create the list of your TLEs for your satellites, uh, if you want to import them as just MTOs, again, just the visual analysis, you can do that using a connect command. And you're going to go ahead and open the integrated HTML browser by clicking this HTML button up here. I'm going to click Browse. Go to Example HTML Utilities, SDK Automation, 
API demo and select the API demo utility. Now, connect commands are a programming interface that exists to make automation in SDK easier. And with this interface, you can send a single or a series of connect commands directly to SDK, which is pretty convenient for our purposes. So the command that we're going to be using is called track. So it's defining the tracks that we're going to use in the multi-track object, the MTO. And we're going to tell it to select the MTO, the empty MTO object that we added into the scenario earlier, which is MTO1, digit 1. And we're going to be pulling the data from a TLE file, so we're going to tell it that. We're going to say, look for it by its file name. And then we're going to give it its file name by going over to where we have our TLE file or our collection of TLEs. And so mine, like I said, I've got one that I loaded up, loaded up earlier, so I'm just going to load in the large constellation collection of TLEs, which is one that I made. So I'm going to copy the file path and paste that into the connect command browser. And I'm going to say, I'm going to type in the name of the file that I wanted to use. And I'm going to give it a time step of 20 seconds. And so this says, step through every 20 seconds and propagate the TLEs uh, based on that interval. And so the smaller time step you do, the better animation, the more fluid it's going to look like your satellites are actually moving the way they're supposed to. But it also takes SDK a little bit longer to load that in. But I think 20 is a good one for us. So we're going to hit run code. And then I'm going to close out the connect command browser because we don't need that anymore. And you'll notice here that this doesn't really look like a bunch of satellites. This looks like a shell all around the world. And uh, the reason for that is that we've got our MTO lines uh, turned on by default. So we're going to go ahead and get rid of those by opening the properties for the MTO double-clicking it in the object browser. We're going to scroll over to 2D graphics track attributes. We're going to hide the tracks from the 2D graphics in case you're looking at the ground tracks. And we're also going to hide the lines in the 3D graphics window. We're going to click OK to save these changes and close out the window. And now I'm going to hide the satellites I made earlier. So you can see just the constellation. And you can see here that we now have a constellation of satellites based off of the TLE that I was stepping through in my Python script. So if I play that, you'll notice that they move, I'll bring down the time step a little bit, and they move accurately through space based off of those two line element files. All the connect commands are in our help. You can look at our help documentation online, the API uh, help interface, if you want to learn more about the different kinds of connect commands, or specifically the other kinds of options that you can use with the track command that we use today. So I use two line element files for this example, but you could have used .e or ephemeris files for other types of vehicle objects. And you would have just been loading in a different kind of uh, file with that same connect command. And that's how you make an MTO in SDK.